Hello everyone, how are you going? Welcome to Geography Now Canada. Now obviously we've been checking out a lot of cultural things about Canada, but I just want to know more about the physical landmass, and so let's see what we've got. Here at Geography Now, we got over 40 people that emailed us to help out with this episode from Canada, so Ooh, without I'll further ado, right here comes the Canada episode. It better be realistic and real. Hey Geography peeps, I'm your host Barbie. Now, a lot of people sometimes have trouble distinguishing between Americans from the US and Canadians. Here's a little yes. analogy. Americans Ooh. are kind of like teenage boys. They're opinionated, energetic, and confident, whereas Canadians are kind of like teenage girls. They'll be polite <laughs> to you to your face, but then they'll talk crap behind your back. Oh, wow. I feel as though it's just right out of the gate. We're just starting off with massive stereotypes. So I don't even know if you'd call them a stereotypes, but man, that is just a hell of a thing. Look, look, if I take it back. energetic, and confident. I mean, I guess I can understand that from my experience. That's kind of what I've experienced. Whereas Canadians are kind of like and teenage girls. And then in terms girls. of this one, well, I really don't know if I've met many Canadians, but at the same time, I'm just going to have to either take his word for it or I don't even just completely reject it. You can let me know in the comments. They'll be polite to you to your face, but then they'll talk crap behind your back. The flag consists of a red field with a white square in the middle. In the middle of the, the entire classic. flag lies a single 11 pointed red maple leaf. Red symbolizes the 11. sacrifice during both world wars and the white symbolizes the peace, tranquility, and neutrality of the country. The Whoa, wait, hang on a second. What? I mean, I know that we've just learned that they had a lot to do with the world wars, but really, I had no idea that that's what it kind of came out of. I mean, obviously, there are a whole bundle of colors you can choose from, but they are very distinct red and white. And really, if I had to guess without knowing that, I would have said, well, I guess the colors were probably based off the Union Jack and that kind of heritage. Not that it was meant to symbolize those two things. Maple leaf has historically been a symbol of Canada for centuries, of even course. during British rule. Some Canadians will tell you the 11 points symbolize the provinces and the last one being for the territories. But wait, hang on a second. What? Oh, okay. Well, I guess if you include the bottom two, I kind of was going, what? There's only three, 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 three. I certainly didn't expect there to be including those to bottom two. But, but I guess if you include the bottom two, I mean, I got to give it to them. They have a very asymmetric, not asymmetrical, very symmetrical flag. It's not asymmetrical, which makes it nice. But eh, that's not really true. That's just kind of how the leaf oh. looks. <laughs> okay, also, then. keep in mind, Quebec would much rather fly this flag instead of the maple leaf. All right, so Canada is huge. It's the second largest country in the world. So it's pretty safe to say that you can bet that there's going to be a lot of interesting things when it comes to administrative divisions. Ooh, First of all, yeah, Canada. Okay. It's located on the North American continent, right above the United States, bordered by three oceans, the Atlantic, the Arctic, and the Pacific on oh, all wow. three sides. The country stretches over three. six time zones and is divided into ten provinces. Oh, six time zones. I mean, I'm fairly sure Australia has what? Do we have four? Three? I mean, I feel as though we're riding the cusp of a couple. I mean, maybe it's even five. God, I'm completely out of line. I mean, because we've got three, but maybe it's five, I think. Perth is five hours behind. I really don't know anymore. Anyway. The country stretches over six time zones and is divided into ten provinces. Ten provinces. Yes, people Newfoundland and Labrador are together one province. And three territories okay. in the north. The capital of Ottawa being in the province of Ontario. Ooh, now Ooh Ontario. Let's have some fun. Now, the thing is, Canada's domain is lavished with sovereignty enigma and semi-autonomous wonder. First of all, let's talk about the border. At over 8,800 kilometers or 5,500 miles. 8,800, so 8,800 kilometer border. That's ridiculous. Ridiculous. First of all, I just want to take it back to, yeah, here we go. Ten provinces and three territories. So they're kind of similar to Australia in terms of we have states and territories. And so, yeah, provinces, states, territories, so they're all kind of mixed into the same thing. At over 8,800 kilometers or 5,500 miles, with thousands of markers Including along Alaska, the way, Canada and the U.S. have the world's longest border between any two countries. Things are a little Crazy. tame on the East Coast, except for that one island they have a dispute with Denmark over. And that one other island with wait, a kayaking what? distance that France refuses to let go of. Wait, what? Was that Greenland? Yeah, Denmark wait. Over. But then the Denmark. Denmark's in there. How the hell is Denmark in and there? And one other island within kayaking distance and that then, France refuses to let go of. And then how the hell do the French still have that? I mean, I feel as though that's just ridiculous. Surely you just go, come on now, everyone. We're living in this century, not that century, and or even millennia. And then you just go, come on, we just have to be able to get our own land mass back, basically. Until you get to the Quebec-Vermont border, and things get a little messed up when you reach Derby Line and Stansted. Since the town what was built before on? modern day borders were properly established, the town has a variety of houses, businesses, and buildings that lie directly on the border. Haskell wow. Free Library even marks the border in its reading rooms and has an entrance for people Damn. on the U.S. side and the Canada side. People of each country must Fair enter enough. on their side, and if they exit on the opposite country, they must stay on the sidewalk and report to the customs office. Failure to do so and stepping on the opposite country, they must stay on the sidewalk and report to the customs office. Oh wow, so you're actually just using the library as a checkpoint between the two countries. That's crazy. When he first said countries like thousands of checkpoints between the two countries, I was like, what do you mean checkpoints? That's just strange. But now I suddenly understand just using all these different buildings.
lines and random just areas where you can just pass between the two countries. Failure to do so and stepping on the road can result in arrest. And Whoa. this delightfully accidental slab of confusion known as the Northwest Angle that belongs to it's Minnesota, on mostly here. owned by the Ojibwe tribe, situated on the Lake of the Woods, where you can find the reassuringly perfect getaway spots, Massacre Island, and Little Massacre Island. The rest of the border tries as best there. as it can to cut straight on the 49th parallel, even though it zigzags a little bit, and four airports have runways that either stretch or are exactly parallel <laughs> to the border. Some Why would they do that? That sounds like such a headache for everyone involved. I mean, I know that, like you said, there was a whole bunch of things that were built or just kind of designated before the modern borders were put in, but surely, like, building a runway these days, or realistically, just any time in the modern okay. day? Four Where is it? Like, look at this. Like, how do you just go, let's just not move, I don't know, 50, 100, 200 meters just a little bit more south, and you go just completely ditch it off the top of the Canada, because then you just get to completely be out of Canada's way, and you can just kind of do your own thing and not have to just be a checkpoint and have to manage all that. I mean, I guess as an airport, you're probably going to be kind of a little bit internationally distributed anyway, but come on, surely there were a whole lot of things that could just be kind of moved or just, I don't even know what you do, but just not that. Somewhere around 80% of Canadians live within 100 miles or 160 kilometers to the border of the US, and the further oh, wow. north you go, things just get a little kind of within 100 a miles or 80%? 160 kilometers to the border of the US. And wow, that's crazy. That's such a slither of the entire thing. I mean, no wonder if you take it back to this entire line here, here we go, no wonder that it just must be so, so, so close and packed. I mean, I guess it's kind of similar to how Australia just lives near the coast. West, and the further north you go, things just get a little kind of fuzzy and neglected. They still right. have a little bit of trouble integrating the rest of the land the further up you go. There are only two main highways that lead to the Yukon and Northwest Territories from the two. south, whereas there are virtually no roads leading to any of the provinces or territories into none of it. Wow, that's pretty incredibly, I guess, isolated. I mean, I know Australia is a very, very isolated place, but that just sounds very isolated as well. I mean, maybe it's to do with the fact that it's very snow-ridden. I don't really know if that's a word, but no, either way, the fact that he said no roads or just two roads like what half the country probably that's pretty insane the south whereas there are virtually no roads leading to any of the provinces or territories into none of it the wow. only way to get into none of it is to either fly or take a boat i mean technically Jeez. you could walk across the border but that would suck Ooh, speaking of none of that. it boat i mean technically you could i just want to take it back border, to here that... look at that that is just i don't know that's an alien world really suck speaking of none of it canada has the most northerly inhabited place in the world oh, oh really Canada, a perpetually icy, frozen, desolate settlement that. typically operated by as few as five people year round. Functioning but, as wait, the most northerly habited way? I thought that belonged to the North Pole. I mean, maybe there isn't any North Pole bases. I just assumed there was, but I know there's Antarctic bases, but I guess I just kind of always assumed that there was also Arctic bases, but maybe not. Perhaps they actually just leave it to places like Canada and I guess Greenland and uh, Russia, maybe just to kind of just control that entire area. As both as a militaristic station and a seasonal research facility. Now, the one thing Fair you have enough. to know about Canada's administrative division is that it all kind of constitutionally fits together until you get to Quebec. Although Quebec what? is still considered a province of Canada, they've made it very clear in the past that they have a strong sense of Quebecois nationalism that many even take to the separatist extreme. Nonetheless, many of Canada's divisions okay. and functions are heavily influenced by the landscape, such we will discuss in. Ah, oh, yes, here okay, we go. So Physical again, geography. Canada... This was actually kind of what I was most interested in because, I, like I said, it's just so foreign in terms of a geography sense compared to Australia, I feel. Canada is huge and often referred to as the Great White north however not Look all of canada thing. is a chilly arctic tundra first of all canada Supposedly, that's what they allegedly say is the same way that Australians are all apparently actors I certainly feel as though there are a lot of Canadians that are going no 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 it doesn't snow at all meanwhile they're just like hunkered in an igloo Canada's physical features are built with a strange yet complementary mix of geological and meteorological Yes, that's a word. What? Score meteorological facets. Looking at Canada, one of the most notable features that sticks out would have to probably be the Hudson Bay. The second largest True. bay in the world after the Bay of Bengal, and the largest- Oh wow, that's a bay? I never even realized that that counts as a bay. Have to probably be the Hudson Bay. Man, that's a massive bay. I mean, I guess it certainly makes sense. I don't really know what else you'd call it, but in a way, I wouldn't be surprised if it was just called, I don't know, another sea. You know, you get random little seas all over the place. And then in terms of this one, I guess I just always assumed it wasn't anything special. It was just kind of all part of the Atlantic Ocean. Of Bengal and the largest bay that freezes over in winter. This oh, bay wow. provides a drainage basin that hydrates about half of the entire country and a little bit of the what? northwest of the U.S. The strange Holy thing is that Lord. the Hudson Bay, actually, is the largest back. bay that it freezes over the entire thing. Freezes over. I mean. 
is not what it's not, but that is a lot of water to be freezing over. Freezes over in winter. This bay provides a drainage basin that hydrates about half of the entire country. And a drainage basin? I mean, I don't exactly know what that means, but man, there's a lot of hydration if that's the case. A little bit of the northwest of the US. The strange thing is that the Hudson Bay actually sits on a gravitational anomaly in which gravity here is actually a little bit lower than the rest of the planet's what? average. It has to do with some kind of sciencey reason about ground convection and ice melt rebound, yada yada yada. Hey guys, want to lose some weight? What the Try hell? the new workout and diet trend. Hudson 90X. Our diet and workout plan includes is it going to the Hudson Bay? Wait, so it's heavier or is it lighter gravity? Because for some reason when he first said it, I was pitching that it would be lighter, but is it heavier? Because if it's heavy, I mean, I guess things are flowing down, but that's a whole bundle of, I don't know, scientific madness that's going on if that's a heavier piece of the gravity compared to the rest of the world. No, but seriously, almost nobody lives along the Hudson Bay. It's almost impossible to build roads with the really? rugged, splotchy rock landscape with too many ponds and that. lakes getting in the way for any straight highway to be built. Oh my God, Speaking yeah, of which, true. at around two to three million, it's actually speculated that around 60% of all the world's lakes and about 30 percent of all the world's fresh water can be found in canada tap water can actually two to three million that's just man i mean i know some people have been saying that there's a lot of lakes but two to three million have better quality than bottled water in canada this has to do largely Fair with enough. the domineering freckly crevice zone that takes up about half of the entire country the canadian shield the canadian shield is a wide plateau of exposed pre-cambrian wow. igneous rock that harbors little soil and vegetation but offers a glory field of mining canada has some of the world's richest Jesus, wait, didn't he say that what how did this go from water to mining the dominant Tap water can actually have better quality than bottled water in Taking Canada. This has to do largely with the domineering freckly crevice zone that takes up about half of the entire country, the yeah, Canadian here we go. Shield. The Cana Canadian Shield, I mean, I'd love to know who named that because that's one hell of a name, you know. You just got this massive amount of land that's just acting as a shield. I mean, I want that. The Canadian Shield is a wide plateau of exposed Precambrian igneous rock that harbors that. little soil and vegetation, but offers a glory field of mining. Canada has some of the world's wow. richest deposits of metal ores like nickel, gold, silver, and copper. Two thirds of all the cesium in the world comes from one mine in Manitoba, Burnick Lake. Jeez. But a little side note, Canada has the world's largest third order lake island. That what? I mean, I know he's about to explain it, but that was just a weird sentence. Burnick Lake. Fun little side note, Canada has the world's largest third order lake island. That's an island in a lake on an island in a lake on an island. Located... What? Okay, let me take that back. Lake island. That's an island in a lake on an island in a lake on an island. Lo Jeez, okay, so I can understand it's kind of like, I guess, family trees and third party removed. But no, it was an island on a lake on an island on a lake. What? I mean, I guess that's just a lot of layers of water and whatnot, but either way, man, Canada just going crazy. Located on Victoria Island, this little squiggly four acre rock was discovered by map nerds who scrolled Google Maps just a couple of years ago. The island has no name and has most likely never had anyone step foot on it. Really? Oh, here we go. I just want to take it back. So, oh, so that is considered an island within this, which is then within what this kind of watery area? which is then within this entire area oh my god i mean man some people just have a hell of a lot of time in their hands to be scrolling through google maps to be out of finding things like that anyone step foot on it i mean i'll do it if nobody else will but i might need a corporate sponsorship i'm looking at That's you crazy. Jemima. canada also has two of the top 10 largest impact craters on earth sudbury crater in ontario and manicougan in quebec with its almost perfectly circular imprint flooded and now a reservoir that you can see from space i mean i'm fairly sure the number one biggest impact crater that we know of is the one in Mexico, the one that's supposedly meant to have done the dinosaurs and whatnot, but no, for Canada to have two massive ones, that's pretty incredible. I guess you can certainly see it's very circular, but either way, I certainly wouldn't have think that that was a meteor impact that that was that big. Rapid fire throughout all the rest of the facts. About 40% of the country is covered in forests, and about one tenth of the world's forests are in Canada. Over 60% of the world. About 40% of the country is covered in forests, and about one tenth of the world's forests are in Canada. Over 60% of the world's polar bears live in Canada. The Bay of Fundy has the world's highest tidal range, with the highest point being over 16 meters. Niagara Whoa. Falls, Canada. 16 the Bay meters. Of Fundy has the world's highest tidal range. With now I just want to see this. Here we go. These boats the just like dried up. Oh my goodness. I mean, it feels like that's not really a good thing to be happening unless they've got a little bit of uh, timber support underneath them. But really that is a massive tide either way i wonder if that's a real photo of the place that he's talking about or not because realistically even though that's a massive drop in water that is nowhere near 16 meters that is like, like i can't even comprehend a tide that is 16 meters in difference
or 16 meters. Niagara Falls looks cool. Mount Thor has the world's highest vertical drop. Quebec Damn. alone supply over 16 oh my meters. God. Niagara Falls looks cool. Mount Thor has the world's highest Mount vertical Mount Thor. I mean, of course it's going to be called Mount Thor, but my God, that is a massive thing. I mean, that kind of just reminds me of El Cap and things like that, but I would love to have a side by side in terms of El Cap versus Mount Thor because they both look pretty imposing. Drop. Quebec alone supplies about 70% of the world's maple syrup, and they actually have a maple syrup reserve with over 222,000 barrels of maple syrup. Prince Edward Island Wait, is a weird what? natural. Reserve. I mean, I know I keep pausing it, but this is just blowing my mind every five seconds. What the hell is going on in Canada where you have a 200,000 barrel reserve of maple syrup? Like for what? Just so the entire economy doesn't shut down because people can't get their maple syrup or you can't export it? What the hell is going on? For 222,000 barrels of maple syrup, Prince Edward Island 000. is a weird natural phenomenon in which the sands on the beach make this weird squeaking noise when you step on it. Here's some footage. Wait, hang on a second. I just had to pause it there because that's not a national phenomenon that is only found in that. I feel as I can go to any Australian beach or at least 50% of Australian beaches and I'm going to be able to do that it just every time without even trying. Yeah, like I said, I've done that plenty of times before. The largest inland lakes besides the ones shared with the U.S. on the Great Lakes are the Great Bear and Great Slave Lakes, named after the slavey people. More lakes, no, of I'm course. I'm not talking about slaves, I'm talking about the slavey people. There's a difference. One we'll discuss in... Here we go. Demographics. Canada is one of those places where everybody kind of fits in, but there's always a little bit of gossip going around every corner. First of all, Canada has about 35 million people, making it one of the least densely populated places on Earth, about three quarters of whom identify as white. Asians make up about 14%. Natives and Aboriginal peoples make up a surprising 5%. Blacks okay. at three, Latinos at two, and the rest are just kind of everything else. Now, again, okay. Canada's population takes another turn because in addition to ethnicity, Canada also has linguistic groups. About one out of every three Canadians either speak speaks French fluently or understands enough to get by. The whole oh, okay, one out of every three. I mean, I guess that certainly makes sense in terms of what we've heard with all the entire French influence and whatnot, but one out of three? I mean, I really don't know if I would have thought it was higher or lower than that because I know that it's such a kind of prominent thing, but I guess for people to actually be fluent in it or understand enough to get by, that's a pretty decently high level of French. I mean, I'd be fairly certain if you were to include everyone that has either ever studied it or even just knows any of it, it would probably be, I don't know, 90% surely, if just for based on what I've heard. The whole Quebec thing kind of plays a paramount role in Canada's societal operations. They kind of have to work really hard to make sure that this one province cooperates. Also, <laughs> keep in mind, Quebec isn't the only place in Canada where French is spoken. Communities in Ontario, Manitoba, and especially the Maritime Province like New Finland, New Brunswick, and Nova Scotia have huge communities of French speakers. The difference though is that these French speakers have an even deeper level of segregated culture. Many people in the Maritime Provinces have a unique Acadian French culture Wait, that differs in culture. I just have to take it back to here because I've never heard of someone called a marine province or what did he say maritime province maritime province i feel as though i've never heard that in a sentence before but just i don't even know what's going on with those boats but obviously it's something important have a unique acadian french culture that differs from quebec fun wow. side note the cajun people of the u.s in louisiana are generally descended from the acadian people that were expelled and deported from these provinces by the british in the 1700s back There's then a lot the louisiana going on. purchase didn't happen yet so all of this area was still french yada 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 they came over Whoa. and invented louisiana oh, that that is absolutely insane. That's a massive amount of land. So wait, wait. So the US was kind of belonged to Canada slash it was belonged to France. What the hell is going on there? There is so much to unpackage in this video that I'm never going to be able to get through it at this rate. But man, that's a lot of land and really a, for all of that to be French, that's a lot. So all of this area was still French. Yada, yada, yada. They came over and invented gumbo. So that's why Cajuns speak French, America, because... Canada! Nonetheless, about okay. one out of every five Canadians was born outside of Canada, making Canada pretty diverse, wow. especially by U.S. entertainment quota standard. And this is where I want to make a Geography Now spotlight. Canada has a somewhat shrouded community of under-highlighted individuals that typically go unnoticed even by Canadians. Sure, we can talk about Toronto, Vancouver, heck, even Calgary has some Wait, chips what? Is that Toronto? I thought that was the Seattle Canadians. Skyline. Sure, we Wait a second, hang on. Maybe, oh, has Toronto got that as well? But I'm fairly sure that I've seen that as a Seattle Sky Needle. I mean, maybe I'm just kind of confusing the two because at the same time, I do have kind of a memory of Toronto having someone like that, but I don't know. I definitely know that if I saw that, I'd say, oh, that's in Seattle. 
We can talk about Toronto, Vancouver, heck, even Calgary has some chips on the table, but nobody really gives these guys what? a chance. So Yukon, Northwest, none of it, I'm putting you guys on display. Altogether, the population of all three of these territories is only about 110,000 people, making it the most sparsely populated area of all of Canada. First Fair of all, enough. indigenous peoples of Canada number about 850,000 and altogether wow. have about 630 reservations speckled throughout the entire country. The reservations, I mean, I don't exactly know what reservations are. I mean, maybe that's just reserved areas of land that's the only thing I can really derive from reservations but no either way I can only imagine that what is he gonna say three territories or well, that's where they're focused in mostly but no to have 850,000 indigenous people still living there I mean I'd love to know the kind of scale or percentage difference between Australia I mean I have no idea what the real numbers would be for the Australian Aboriginals but I don't really think it's that high especially because they said 5% before and I'm fairly sure it's lower than that the largest reserves are located in these territories indigenous okay. people in Canada are generally categorized into three separate groups the First Nations, the Métis, and the Inuit. The Métis okay, are well, mixed race. Different. So First Nation, Métis, and Inuit are groups. different. The Métis are mixed race Indigenous. The First Nations are generally Southern tribes that typically live in forested areas, and the Inuit are straight up Arctic folk. Here's okay, how you can kind of distinguish enough. the three territories. Yukon is predominantly white. The Northwestern Territories has a lot of First Nation tribes, like the Slavey people, who can be found close to the Great Slave Lake. Although many of them prefer to be called the Dene. Cool side note: the Navajo tribe in the U.S. to some extent trace their heritage to these people. See how everything is connected? Trace their heritage? Man, that has to be a massive amount of heritage in terms of just how long ago it would be. That's crazy. I mean, like I said, there were just so many things that are just going over my head because there's just too much information to take in just in a fast format like this. But I'm just trying my best and I'm certainly absorbing what I can. And so I guess the only real thing I can do is just try and build upon the basic knowledge that I have and go, oh, okay, so the First Nations isn't all encompassing. It is actually just split into three different groups and you go, okay, so these people just live up north. These are more southerly. These are more whatever it may be and so yeah obviously like I said just too much information for one guy almost to the point where I'm sure I'm just going to be learning more things when I'm editing it and then I'm probably going to have to watch it again and again and again just to be able to just absorb everything finally we reach none of it which is almost exclusively Inuit the Northwest Territories and none of it actually used to be part of the same territory but then in 1999 none of it was like I ain't having none of it and became its own thing no but okay. seriously Inuit culture is one of the most underrated and culturally fascinating things you'll ever encounter they speak Inuktitut a cousin of the Greenlandic language they can pretty much understand Greenlandic. each other Wait, what? So you got, oh man, there are just so many things going on here. The fact that that entire language is shared with Greenlandic, he said? Like, I mean, I know they're close, but I never kind of assumed that they would have anything to do with each other or I'd never have heard. But I guess considering the fact that if, I don't even know if I'll be able to find it, but the, either way, they are both so Arctic and Northern in the entire scheme of things that they're just gonna have, I guess, so many things in common. They have their own written, they speak Inuktitut, a cousin of the Greenlandic language. They can pretty much understand each other. And they have their Crazy. own written script that you can find on street signs and traffic posts. They have a long history of vibrant traditions, rituals, games, music, and even cuisine. If you ever come here, make sure you try some whale blubber and watch a throat game song which looks like this. <laughs> What a great way to make friends. Wait, Which takes us to... I mean, is it a song? Is it a game? I mean, both ways in terms of both music and games can be a great way to make friends, but I'm a little bit confused about with that entire thing now. But no, either way, I'm just always so incredibly surprised that just anyone is kind of Aboriginal to any bear cop. Because honestly, I have no idea how anyone besides just like massive, I don't know, modern thermal puffer jackets, how does anyone survive in just massively subarctic temperatures or sub-zero temperatures? Canada is friends with everyone. The end. Oh, hang on a second. Here we go. Best I was going to say, I was like, what? I mean, maybe they are. I don't really know if they have any kind of turmoil with anyone. I mean, hey, I guess maybe there's some very minor in the grand scheme of things domestic dispute between the US and Canada or even just between Quebec because he seems to keep going on about Quebec. But either way, <laughs> the fact that it goes on, oh, no, hopefully he'll really explain who it is. Nah, okay. Let's elaborate just a little bit more. Okay, so Canada Here does kind of typically maintain a foreign policy that does encourage diplomacy outreach to pretty much yeah. every country that they can grab at. Of and course. they even had good ties with Cuba after the US put an embargo on them. Wait, really? How the hell do you even manage that? I mean, I guess they're good diplomacy. Nonetheless, Canada's relations kind of typically shadow those of the US. Allies with the same allies and opponents with the same opponents. Of I mean, course. have you seen the movie Argo? First of all, Canada is not only part of the Commonwealth, but the Commonwealth realm. Yes, there's a difference. So in general, they pretty much get well, I have no idea. Wait, what? Along with everything that was once part of the British Empire. Oh, okay. So the Commonwealth realm is, I guess, kind of just ex-Commonwealth. Because, yeah, I guess if we pause it here, you've got Australia, India, South Africa, and all of the other African countries, and then Canada as well. And so, yeah, there's a whole bundle of things. I don't know what this, I guess the orange is kind of mixed, and there's a whole bundle of blue dots everywhere. And so, yeah, a whole bundle of little islands. But I guess, you know, you've just kind of kept relations from ages ago, and so you're just going to keep them now, aren't you? Then you get the Frank 
francophone countries that also gel well with Canada as well. Oh, the funny thing wow. is, although the U.S. complains about the immigration procedures of Mexicans into the U.S., Canada is actually trying to coerce and entice Mexicans to come in. With its low birth rate and a need for a bigger workforce to assist the aging population, oh, wow, Canada really? has relaxed its immigration and visa policies in order to gain skilled workers, and specifically from the Central American regions. Flyers and advertisements are spread all over Mexico, That's encouraging crazy. them to move in. I wonder how you even do that. I mean, I guess you just kind of apply for all these things, but why would people then be going to the U.S. instead of Canada? I feel as though, is it, I don't know, I guess you have to kind of go through the country and you're not allowed to go through the country, but I feel as though if you're kind of literally being offered or otherwise rejected by the U.S., surely it would just make a lot more sense to be trying to get into Canada. I mean, maybe there's a whole bundle of things that are getting in the way, but from a simplistic idea, you know, you're being welcomed in one and being rejected by another, and so I would love to know more about that as well. Of course, when it comes to those closest to them, Canada does have their top pick, the United States. Oh, Some say course. Canada is like the little brother of the U.S., some say it's like the best friend, but in all honesty, Canada and the U.S. It's the little brother, come on now, you certainly can't be saying it's kind of the best mate or anything like that, it's just not even on the same pie, you know, it just basically comes down to a GDP and a population thing, and really it's the same thing to kind of New Zealand to Australia, and then Australia to the U.S. and all of those kind of things, you know, you just got tiers of country, and these little countries in terms of population just cannot compete with the top three in terms of population. Some say it's like the best friend, but in all honesty, Canada and the U.S. are kind of like teenage high school sweethearts. Canadians Aww. and Americans have been there for each other since day one. The U.S. is so, the yeah. largest export and business partner of Canada and shares the closest diplomatic ties both nationalistically and militaristically. The difference between yeah. Canadians and Americans, though, is that Americans gain their independence by force, whereas Canadians by diplomacy. There we go. I feel as though that just kind of sums up the entire thing. Like I said, they just seem very diplomatic about every single approach that they have, and the U.S. considering the fact that they have the most might in terms of modern day might, you know, they spend just an enormous amount of their GDP on the military, and I feel as though it's just kind of carried over from the fact that it was force. I mean, you know, regardless of the fact that it was right or wrong, it doesn't even matter. But I feel as though those two things just sum up those countries in terms of how they go about their business sometimes. American immigration policy is like a melting pot where people are kind of expected to assimilate, whereas Canadian foreign policy is kind of like a mosaic. People are encouraged to be distinct culturally. In all honesty, though, they are wow. kind of like a cute... Well, that's a really random way to put it, but I really like that. In all honesty, though, they are kind of like a cute little teenage boyfriend-girlfriend couple. Sometimes they like oh, to poke yeah. fun at each other, but at the end of the day, they're totally dating and they're totally making out with each other in the back of the movie. Oh, games. yeah. In conclusion, Absolutely. Canada, you little sweet cheek, you. I'll pick you up at seven. We're going out for some pancakes on that island. In a lake, on an island. Ooh, in a lake, yes. on an island. Damn. You know, if you want to be taking me to have some pancakes on an island, in an island, in an island, in an island, then that's some pretty good stuff if you ask me. Oh, but anyway, I guess that's going to do it for the end of this video. No, that was just so much information. There is no way I'm ever going to be able to comment or even process anything or, or I guess all of that entire information. But that was a very detailed video, way more information than I ever expected. From the fact that you've got, what, like two to three million lakes and then a whole bundle of the world's fresh water supply to even the fact that I guess each kind of state and territory or what was it called? Reservations? No, I'm forgetting right now. But either way, they were all kind of working in junctions with each other, but also had their own kind of thing. You know, you had the Inuit people up north, you had Quebec, which was kind of, I guess, different to the rest of the country in terms of what he was saying and so yeah there was heaps to unpack there and i'm sure there was just going to be a whole bunch of people going oh no this is actually what it is this is actually what it is and just answering any more questions that i had but either way that was just a very action-packed video and man that was just wow what is that is what i can say but anyway in saying that i reckon i'm going to call it there so thank you for watching this video if you did enjoy it make sure to do the youtube algorithm things down below also if this is the first video month that you're watching then maybe you want to check out some of the other ones we've done you know plenty of canadian videos and also make sure to check out the original video in the description below or hey maybe you even just want to consider subscribing so that you don't miss another one of these in the future but all in all have one and see ya